Hello everyone. Um, I thought I'd do a video on board volume. Um, there's been a few videos about this, um, but I wanted to go into a bit more detail um, than most have, as there may be a few things which could do with being clarified to help, you know, really have a full understanding of the mechanics at play. And the idea of this is to kind of assist you in choosing, you know, the right board for you, perhaps the next board. Um, and I'm also going to go into kind of some techniques which help minimise um, the difficulties you're going to have with lower volume boards. Now the reason I want to talk about this is I've recently picked up um, a prone board. Um, this is 45 litres um, and I really didn't have any intention of, um, of wing foiling with it initially. Um, but being the curious person that I am, I thought I'd give it a go. And actually I found out it was pretty easy to, um, to get on with. You know, this is 46 litres, I'm 82 kilos. Um, so this is getting on for sort of half, um, half of my weight in volume. Um, certainly when you take the weight of the board off. Um, and it's very, very doable. Um, now, I tried a, a low volume board kind of maybe a year and a half ago. Um, I think this was like a, a 30, 35 litre board and I really didn't get on with it. Um, the primary technique which people were using back then was to kind of sink the board fully underwater and then kind of pump it up out of the water and um, that's really, really difficult and it, you know, you get tired very, very quickly. Um, and I think that was one of the main reasons why I'd kind of totally ruled out going for, you know, boards much, much lower than um, the, the 65 and then the 58 that I've been riding over the kind of past couple of years. Um, but I think with some tweaks to technique, um, lower volume boards aren't as scary, you know, aren't as scary a proposition as you might think. We're going to go into that in a little bit more detail later. So the main things I want to talk about in this video is firstly, um, basically volume and flotation and talk about the human body and kind of how it floats and how it sinks boards and how heavy various parts of us are. And um, given a, a board and human combination, um, how far you can expect that board to sink given what you actually do. Um, I'm then going to move on to looking at, you know, maybe some techniques that you can use to kind of help minimise the problems you're going to have with lower volume boards, you know, mainly how to get started, how you can make those water starts as easy as possible with low volume boards. And finally, um, I'm going to move on to one of the things which was kind of always a worry for me which is when you're on a low volume board, how do you get back home if the wind drops? Um, I'm going to talk about that a little bit because I, that is also a really kind of important um, consideration when you are starting to go to, to really low volume boards, um, especially if you know, you're riding in offshore conditions, um, you're not in an enclosed lake or something like that. Right, so to start with, I'm going to get out my Old Faithful, uh, this is my 90 litre phaser. I use this um, in pretty much all, all conditions, but especially uh, when the wind's light. Um, it's a 90 litre board um, and its spare weight is about six kilograms. So the actual the buoyancy or the flotation of this board um, isn't 90 kilograms, it's, it's 90 minus its weight, which is six kilograms, so 84 litres of flotation. Um, I happen to be 82 kilograms, um, so with a, with a wetsuit on, more or less, um, this will be perfectly um, floating on the water, literally with the, the top surface of this, of the board, um, you know, basically at the, at the water level, you know, just the soles of my feet um, will be wet. Um, so if we were to get a, um, a lighter person than me, uh, say my wife, um, you know, she's probably about 60 kilograms. Um, in that case, 
um, there'll be 20 litres of excess volume. Um, so when we put that on the water, um, you know, maybe the water line will be somewhere about here, um, you know, three quarters of the, of the thickness of the board um, will be where the water line is lapping up. Um, on the contrary, if we get a, a much heavier rider, um, this board will be submerged um, by some amount. And this is an important concept that I really want to go into. So as an example for where you've got more weight than you have volume or buoyancy, I'm going to take this 46 litre phaser. Um, this um, has a weight of four kilograms. So 46 minus four is 42 litres um, of buoyancy or flotation. Um, so if I were to put this in the water and I were to stand on it, it would of course sink. Um, the question you might ask is, how much does it sink? And this is governed by Archimedes principle. Um, and basically, um, to, cut to, the, to cut to the chase, basically, if 40 kilograms of my body is sunken underwater, um, we will reach equilibrium. Um, so this is probably about, about where my belly button is um, for this board. Um, if it had more volume, um, you know, maybe it might be my knees, um, if it had less, it would be higher and higher up. Um, and this is a really important consideration um, when you're deciding what volume of board is right for you. So if we were to talk about you know, human weight distribution, um, up until my knees, um, for an 80 kilogram rider such as myself, that's about 11 kilograms. Up to the top of my thighs, um, we're talking about 30 kilograms, um, from there downwards and then you know up to my the base of my neck excluding my arms neck and head we're talking about 66 kilograms there um, and you can use these numbers to kind of work out how much your board will sink um, given a certain volume let's do an example of um, a sinking board now so let's assume that this board has got 70 liters of of buoyancy so if I were to stand on this board, um, I would sink to about my knees um, because um, my calves and feet are about 10 kilograms. Um, you could quite easily pump this board up to the surface of the water with it only being submerged about that much. Um, but it is a bit of an effort. Um, if we were to reduce the volume of this board again to say 50 litres of buoyancy, um, then it would be submerged up to about my waist. Um, this would be quite a chore um, to get it up and going. And this was kind of the, ex the accepted way of doing things. Um, you know, when people first started riding lower volume boards, um, it's very doable, but it's quite a lot of effort. Um, in, in gusty conditions, by the time you've pumped the board to the surface of the water, the gust might have passed and you've got to sink back down and start all over again. Um, it's certainly quite a lot of effort and something that could really kind of put you off um, choosing those lower volume boards. You know, the, the benefits you get from, um, you know, a, a lighter, smaller board. You know, you might think, well, I'd rather not have the hassle of all this pumping it out of the water. But there is a, um, a hack that you can use to make this a lot, lot easier for you. Um, so if this were a 70 litre board um, again now, um, if I were just to kneel on the board like this, um, my knees are now only, you know, five, 10 centimetres above the board. These could be fully submerged underwater. Um, so the water level would basically be at my knees. And all I need to do is pump it up, you know, five, 10 centimetres out of the water. If again, we go to um, say um, a 50 litre board, um, the water level will be up to the top of my thighs. Um, this is quite doable to pump it up out of the water. But again, it's more difficulty than, than is necessary because all you need to do is sit down in the water like this. And now my thighs, my calves, all submerged underwater and the water level is likely to be to be here for this 50 litre board. Um, it's quite easy to pump this board up out of the water 
by this distance. Um, so certainly much, much easier than if I were stand, uh, stood up on the, on the same board. So to summarize, um, you know, you can use this hack to ride significantly lower volume boards than you thought that you might have been able to ride otherwise. Um, you don't need to be stood up on these boards. Um, you want to sink as much of your body weight underwater as you can um, without causing any unnecessary drag. Um, which means that the board is sunk less, which means it's much, much easier to get the board out of the water um, given a certain amount of wind, um, which means that you can pick a, a lower volume board than you would otherwise have thought that you might have been able to get away with. Um, as I mentioned, um, you know, the reason I created this video was because I bought this board and I tried it. And, you know, with some adjustments to technique that I've, that I've mentioned, um, it was much, much easier to get this 46 litre board up to the surface of the water and up and riding in even, you know, somewhat marginal conditions than I was expecting. Um, you just need to steer away that from that original technique where you're stood upright, you know, sinking the board greatly and giving yourself a lot of extra work to do. The last thing worth talking about is what happens when the wind dies and you need to get home. Um, on, you know, a 90 litre board such as this, um, this is going to float um, my weight and I'm going to be able to make pretty good progress because um, very little of my body is dragging in the water. Whereas on a low volume board, it's going to be somewhat more difficult and slower. Um, if this were, you know, a board with 70 litres of buoyancy, um, the board would only be sunk a little amount, you know, up to my knees, say, um, and, you know, my knees wouldn't cause much drag. Um, if we were talking about a, you know, 50 litre of buoyancy, um, I can sit down in this position um, and, you know, my knees and calves are in a fairly streamlined position. Of course, it wouldn't be as, as streamlined as this, but I'd be able to make reasonable progress um, from this position flying the wing. Um, and then as you get, you know, to less and less um, volume in the board, you know, the water level is going to be going higher and higher up your torso. And, you know, progress is going to be that much more slow um, through the water. Um, you, you know, you can start to bend your body over more to kind of sink more of your body under the water but it's likely to be quite difficult to be flying the wing the more you bring your your body down um, so this is something that which you really kind of need to consider um, especially if you're riding in conditions on a low volume board where the wind might drop the last resort would be um, if there's no wind at all and then of course um, it's a paddle home um, on a board such as this um, largely the board would be fully submerged underwater under my body weight but all of my body would be out of the water um, which would mean it'd be pretty efficient to paddle whereas you know for this 46 litre phaser here um, largely half of my body would be underwater um, so if I were to be lying like this the water line would be you know somewhere in the middle of my my hips here uh, probably um, and I could still make reasonable um, paddling progress um, compared to compared to that. Um, half of my body would be underwater, so that would cause a fair bit of drag. Um, but you know, the thinner, narrower board itself would have a bit less drag too. Um, so it wouldn't be as efficient as this, um, but I could still make pretty good progress um, back home, uh, even if I needed to paddle it. So I hope this video has been useful. Um, you, maybe you've learned a bit about volume and buoyancy um, and the, the way that interacts with the, the weight distribution of the human body and the way you can use that to um, alter how far the board is sunk underwater and hopefully make um, water starting on low volume boards that bit easier. And you can also use this information um, when you are considering which board to buy next um, so you know kind of what to expect for a given volume of board um, for your own 
for your own body weight. Um, if you did enjoy this video, usual things like subscribe, all that kind of stuff. Um, but with that said, um, thank you for watching. I'll catch you later. Bye.